Hello, I'm Rabbi Elton from the Great Synagogue in Sydney, and our personality today is Rav Yosef Karo, born in 1488 and dies in 1575. Rav Yosef Karo was born in Toledo in Spain, just four years before the Jews were expelled in 1492. And so as a four-year-old, he had to leave his hometown, his home country, and began wandering around the world with his parents, with his family, before eventually settling in Sfat, in the north of the land of Israel. He learnt initially from his father, and then with other teachers. And by the time he arrived in Sfat, he was already seen as a very important, very senior rabbinic scholar. He produced three major works in his rabbinic career. The first is called the Kesef Mishnah, and this is a commentary on Maimonides' Code of Jewish Law. When the young Rav Yosef Kara was first learning, the most important Code of Jewish Law was that of the Rambam, the Mishneh Torah, who we discussed in a previous week. And one of the long-standing questions about the Mishneh Torah is what are the sources of the Rambam's rulings? Where did Maimonides get the uh, rulings which he took and placed in his Mishneh Torah? Because the Rambam doesn't give footnotes, he doesn't give sources. The Kesev Mishnah is an attempt to provide sources for all of the Rambam's rulings and also defends him against the critiques of the rivad Rab Avram ben David of uh, Poskia in Provence uh, and an attempt to justify the Rambam's position. His first, therefore, major work was of the defense of the Rambam and a commentary on his uh, great uh, work of legal ruling. The second uh, work of Rav Yosef Karo was another type of commentary but much more extensive. A few weeks ago we discussed the Rosh, Rabbi Asher ben Yechiel, who was a German rabbi who went to live in Spain, and who took uh, many positions and laid them out on areas of Jewish law. Now he had a son called Yaakov, and Yaakov wrote a book called the Arba Turim, the Four Towers, the Four Pillars. And this book does not treat of the whole of Jewish law like the Rambam does, it only looks at the relevant parts of Jewish law for life uh, today. So the Temple, for example, and all its rules are absent from this uh, book, the Arba Torah. And the Torah gives uh, his conclusions about what the law should be. But since he wrote that in the 14th century, there have been very many further discussions. And therefore, Yosef Kara wrote a book called the Bet Yosef. The Bet Yosef is a discussion of all the different opinions that came after the Arba Torah and giving his own uh, conclusion at the end, weighing everything up. Now, this is a very, very long and very extensive work, still essential in rabbinic study, but it's not a quick or an easy read. And therefore, Rav Yosef Kara wrote what became his most famous work, which is the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch is a sort of crib note to the Bet Yosef. It gives very succinctly and clearly the bottom line ruling in Rav Yosef Kara's view of each and every case of practical Jewish law. He has the same structure as the Torah. It's in four different parts. It only deals with relevant laws to today, and it's been extremely useful and has become, therefore, the dominant code of Jewish law ever since. No real discussion of what the law should be ever omits a reference to Shulchan Aruch, and normally the Shulchan Aruch is taken as authoritative, especially as we will see when it's combined with the glosses of Ramosh Isilis, the Ramah, who makes it relevant also for Ashkenazim as well as for Svadim. How did Rav Yosef Kara decide what ruling he would finally come to in the Shulchan Aruch? Well, he looks at three different figures we've discussed in the past. He looks at the rulings of the Rambam, and of the Rosh, and also of the Rif. We discussed each of these figures in the past, the Rif from North Africa around the year 1000, the Rosh from 13th century Germany, we had to live in Spain, and the Rambam from 12th and 13th century um, Spain and then Egypt. He takes a majority of these three, and that's how he comes to his rulings. Now, one is originally Ashkenazi, and to Asfadi, although even the Rosh went to live in Spain eventually. So there's a very Sephardic bent to the conclusions of the work, which is why Rav Moshe Islis needed to come along and to give an Ashkenazi gloss to make it useful for both Ashkenazim and Sephardim, and really united the whole Jewish world. This code of Jewish law received some opposition because there was still a sense that one should go back to the Talmud in order to determine what the law should be, but its uh, brilliance and its usefulness meant that it became totally dominant as it remains today. There's another very interesting book that Rav Yosef Kara produced, and that's called the Magid Meisharim, because as well as being a jurist, as well as being a legal scholar, Rav Yosef Kara was a very, very significant Kabbalist and mystic. 
and he believed that he was communicated to by an angel, by a maggot, by a heavenly figure who would help him to learn and help him discover what the law ought to be. He lived in Sfat, which is a great centre of uh, Kabbalistic and mystical activity, and while he was there, his uh, Bet Din, his Jewish court, became the greatest and most respected Jewish court in the whole world. So therefore he was a practical rabbinic leader, he was a great scholar and also a mystic, and he combined all of these in one person, and uh, his law book, the Shulchan Aruch, remains the essential guide to Jewish law even today. Thanks for joining.